Attorney spotting to make sure the former cop who shot and killed Walter Scott doesn't spend the rest of his life behind bars take over in the courtroom. It's day three of the Michael Slager sentencing hearing. Slager, who shot Scott, who was not armed in the back as he ran away during the traffic stop in April 2015 that took place in North Charleston, South Carolina. Yesterday, a forensic video expert testified Slager fought Scott, who was not armed, to the ground and warned he would shoot. Later that day, the prosecution rested its case. Now, Slager's state murder trial ended in a hung jury in 2016, but in May of 27, but of course, in May, he pleaded guilty to violating Scott's civil rights. He faces life in prison, but his attorneys are pushing for a 10 to 13 year sentence. Joining me on the phone via from Charleston, South Carolina, is Meg Kennard, political legal affairs reporter for the Associated Press. She has covered this case from the beginning. Meg, I I'm still trying to understand. I, 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 I cannot recall a sentencing hearing taken three days. Some trials don't go three days. Good morning, Roland. Yeah, you're absolutely right. This does seem to be taking a little bit longer than we might expect. But remember, this is everything on the line for Michael Slager. As you mentioned, his state murder trial last year ended in a hung jury, and that case totally went away when he pleaded guilty to these federal charges back in May. So this is it. This is it for him. It's also it for the government. Now that that state case is gone, the federal case is the only one that exists. So both sides have everything vested in what's happening this week. Yesterday was a lot of technical stuff, as you mentioned, this time from the defense instead of the prosecution who is done with their case. So they are being very meticulous. They are taking their time, and the judge is allowing them to go pretty much as long as they want with just about everything that's being presented because this is it. This is this will be the end of the prosecution for Michael Slager once we have this Senate. What do you make of, so you were in, in the courtroom yesterday, uh, were there any surprises in, this, uh, in the hearing? We don't often get a whole lot of surprises when we get to this stage of the game. You know, the evidence has been out there. We heard a lot of this in the state trial last year. But one thing that we didn't hear in the state trial that was new yesterday was the interpretation of these defense audio and video experts of what they heard of the video from this incident. Last year, the defense attorneys tried to put up these same witnesses to tell jurors what they thought they heard from the video. The video is very blurry. I know you've seen it, we've all heard it. It is awful, it is graphic, but parts of it are very hard to hear because Faden Santana was moving, Michael Slager, Walter Scott, they were all moving. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of dissidence. There's a lot of blur. But these analysts took the video apart frame by frame, and they say that they were able to take out a lot of that noise and underneath it all hear two things. One, Walter Scott yell an expletive about police, and two, hear Michael Slager say, "Let go of my taser before I shoot you, or or I'll shoot you." Those are two bits of evidence that weren't allowed before the jury in the state trial. Prosecutors effectively, apparently, were able to argue that they thought that was highly prejudicial. That's just an interpretation. That's just something that these analysts say that they thought they heard after doing all of this fancy stuff to remove the background noise. That is something we heard yesterday. It was allowed to come into the case. There's no jury here. It's just the judge. So that actually was it's not a surprise because we all knew it existed, but now it is officially something that's part of the case record that didn't happen in the state trial. All right, then. Uh, and so is today supposed to be the last day? It's hard to tell. We do know that we still will expect some impact witnesses. As you know, those are family members, people who can speak passionately on one side or the other about either the loss of their loved one or the loss of Michael Flager if he does go away to prison what his absence would mean for his family. So we do expect to hear that, and it's unknown how much time the judge is going to want to consider all of that before he pronounces sentencing. All right, Mayor Kennard, we appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Uh, go to our panel here, Ray Baker, host of Public Agenda Podcast, Greg Carr, chair of the Department of Afro-American Studies at Howard University, Derek Holly, president of Reaching America. I mean, when you, look, when you, when you see this here, again, I, I, don't, I ain't never heard of a, a sentencing hearing 
go in three days. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> One of the things I think is important for our viewers to remember in this conversation also, uh, that the expert witnesses that Meg talked about that were being introduced are also professional witnesses. Now, I'm not saying this to discredit them. I'm saying that they are professionally, for, oftentimes and sometimes for hire, to be psychiatrists, to testify to the mind state of particular law enforcement officers in various events. One of the folks, a psychiatrist, who says that Although Mr. Slager said something that contradicted what our video evidence said, he wasn't necessarily lying, it could be a byproduct of stress. That's a professional witness. That's someone who gets paid to go there and assess go. these things and provide analysis, mm -hmm. oftentimes for the benefit of one of two particular interested parties, sure. for pay more often than not. So I think it's important <clears throat> to keep that in mind as we think about how these witnesses and what these impact statements and the various issues mm -hmm. will be in this case. Right. Well, I mean, I just hope I live long enough to be treated like a white man in America <laughs> uh, so that a judge sitting on a bench can take his her time to give me every benefit of every doubt. I think uh, not introducing the evidence that was introduced in sentencing now, not introducing a trial was right because the intent was inconsequential in that sense. I mean, you know, to help somebody yell something at you. But at the end of the day, uh, just like with Karen Brown, or only just reported on this, when people come in and testify on behalf of someone, at the end of the day, the judge gets to make this decision. So uh, we'll see within the sentencing guidelines what he does. But yeah, I hope I get treated like that. I think right now, as you said, we started, it's very concerning that it's taken three days right now for them to come back with any type of uh, decision with this case. Well, first of all, I mean, no, no, I mean, you know, he's pled guilty. Sure. Mm -hmm. Civil rights charges. So mm -hmm. The judge will render the ruling. Right. But again, I mean, I'm just, I, I just have never seen a sentencing hearing go three days. Three days. Mm -hmm. So again, it, it is concerning to see what's going to happen. But I tell you, man, you know, again, these, these witnesses, they are paid. But it, what's unfortunate, too, is just how some of these officers are just always on high alert. Every single, I was at the Supreme Court yesterday and stepped off the curb. And MPD jumped at me because I was in the street. I was like, yo, officer, I'm on your team. And so once I apologized, he, he, immediately his, uh, his threat level lowered. But these are the situations, man, with things where if I'd have just even said maybe something different, that whole situation could have gone yep. completely different. Could have gone wrong. You're born suspect. You're born suspect. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. it, it is concerning that they haven't come back yet. Uh, Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.